What is the most disturbing thing to know? I work as an anesthesiologist. I've put people to sleep in an emergency situation knowing that they will almost certainly not survive the surgery. These are generally situations where without surgery the patient will not survive but even with surgery the chances of survival are still small. In most of these instances the patients are too obtuned it or aren't conscious enough to be aware of the gravity of their situation but in a number of instances the patients have been conscious, talking although clearly anxious. I try to reassure and tell the person that we won't leave their side, that we will take care of them and that they will be fine. It kind of ducks me up a bit to say this to someone but I always include the last part because I just don't see the point in telling them the truth. I had one guy tell me he felt like he wasn't going to make it. I told him he would make it but knew he wasn't going to. I put him to sleep knowing that the last human face he would see before he died was mine as he stared up at me as I held an oxygen mask over his mouth and nose. I'd consider myself quite a resilient person but knowing this stuff is a bit of a load to carry around. Early Childhood Malnutrition between ages 0 to 5, causes irreversible loss of IQ, 11 to 20 points, and predisposes people to higher levels of violence. Prefrontal cortex doesn't develop the same. And if you miss that window there's no intervention that can recover the gap. I live in South Africa, highest Gini coefficient in the world, highest unemployment, third highest violent crime rate, one of the worst education systems in the world, and it ducking keeps me up at night. I wonder, if we changed nothing except introducing a one nutritious meal per day feeding scheme for ACT, what would happen? It hurts. No need to wonder, it's a proven effective strategy. I actually work in the field on this exact research. If you want to dive deeper, you can look into the McGovern Dole School feeding programs throughout West Africa and Latin America. The outcomes for literacy, math, overall attendance and general health by just ensuring at least one solid meal a day are incredible. My son went to a public kindergarten in Brazil, and every day amazed me the focus they had in feeding all the children. He was there from 8 to 5, and he got 5 meals while there. Breakfast, a fruit, lunch, a soup and then dinner, everything made in the kitchen, everything locally sourced. Also they took care that the kid went back home properly bathed. Too bad this level of excellence does not continue in the public grade school, except for the feeding the kids thing, but the actual teaching and the violence is bad. By the time you show the symptoms of rabies, it's already too late, it can also be dormant for a year before you show those symptoms. I have a real fear of rabies because of this. If you ever find a bat in your house, or anywhere you have slept, get the rabies shots. Bats can bite or scratch you and you sometimes won't even notice, especially if you were asleep. A couple of years ago a 20-year-old in BC got out of his car and a bat flew at him. He saw it coming and put up his hand. Because bat bites are so tiny he didn't notice and went about his day. Six weeks later he showed symptoms and died shortly after. If he had gotten a Robbie shot right after being bitten he would have been fine. Long story short, if you get attacked, even if you feel nothing, get a shot right away. Edit, correction, it's rabies shots not Robbie shot. I literally just finished the rabies series because of this. Bat got in the house and made its way into a laundry basket with folded clothes. I was getting dressed for work, reached in and pulled out a brown bat. Felt a definite pinch, still not sure if it actually bit me. Decided better safe than sorry and went to the ER. What's even better is the rabies vaccine is a four-part series and you can only get it in the ER. Hotels rarely clean their ice machines. I've only worked one place ever that soaked their fountain nozzles in diluted cleaner overnight. No one else cleaned them. There are lots of nooks and crannies inside them. That's what your soda goes through. I once called the health department on a subway for getting bugs in my Sprite. When I worked at a subway in Canada back in the early 00s, taking those off and soaking them overnight was a part of the night breakdown. We weren't 24 hours though. That said, I've worked a lot of places since where those are never taken off and cleaned. It's gross. One place was even amazed and thought I'd broken the machine when they saw that I'd taken off the nozzles and cleaned them. That there is anywhere between 25 to 50 active serial killers in the United States, according to the FBI. Edit, added words. Yet you are still far more likely to be murdered by someone you know and trust. Or just a drunk driver TBH, or a texting driver. Or sandwiched between two serial killers separate vehicles while they are drunk texting one another. Both of whom you know and trust. 
Yet, it was the roasted peanut that got stuck in your throat that finishes you off. There are spiders that capture bats in South America. There's some spiders that eat birds in Australia, they look nasty. The youngest person to ever give birth was 5 years old. Lena Medina just think of what happened to the poor girl. If we see a life-threatening meteor is going to strike us in a few years, we probably, at least at the moment, couldn't do anything about it. They've had training simulations with this exact scenario, and they only got it right like 10% of the time, they need more like 10 years to reliably and consistently stop it. I also feel they wouldn't tell us to avoid widespread panic. But I have thought about this scenario and one question comes to mind. If you knew a meteor would hit Earth and it's an extinction-level event dot would you go where the meteor hits, or to the other side of the planet? If it is a world-ending event I'll go to where it is supposed to hit. I wanna see the light show and go out with a bang you know? This is a little odd to read because of a dream I had a few weeks ago. It was broadcast that we were going to be hit by a meteor, and there was pretty much nothing we could do about it. A lot of people panicked, some just accepted it, some went all bucket list crazy. Very similar to the Seeking a Friend for the End of the World movie. For whatever reason, I was away but desperately wanted to get home to be with my five-yo son at the end. I ended up making it, and we went to sit on a grass hill to watch. It was a nice cool summer night, and a lot of other people were also sitting around waiting for the end. He asked me what was going on, he had no idea, so I tell him, Turi's going to be a big fireworks type of show. You'll see a bright light, and when you do it will be awesome. He sat there excited, waiting. The sky lights up like it's daytime. I hear him say wow you, then bam, am awake. That dream hit me hard as hell and I couldn't get it out of my head for weeks. Those kinds of dreams man. I kinda love hate them. Awesome for movie concept, but they will duck you up. That the majority of humans will wait until life-threatening problems become unsolvable before they try to fix them. I think that's my call to talk to my doctor about my bleeding anus. You should. I waited now I don't have a colon. I haven't farted in 5 years. It sucks. A dying person's eyes will sometimes go from close to shooting wide open as they pass. Source, personal observation unfortunately edit, to clarify, this happened to my father-in-law and I was present. My heart goes out to everyone else who has lost loved ones. Even though the eyes opening was certainly disturbing, being able to have him die at home as he wished and us being there with him at the end was a positive experience that I've made peace with. Thanks for the awards and it's nice discussing with everyone. I guess I'm kind of thankful my dad was asleep in a coma when he passed, seeing his eyes left open would have been too painful. When he took his last breath, tears came down his face, which I was not expecting. My dad did too. He was not in a coma exactly, but very much non-responsive and with his eyes closed. I think he just couldn't make his body do what he wanted really, because right before he died he cried like that and very gently squeezed mom's hand and then. He was just gone. These are making me cry. So beautiful and humanly tragic. One of the scariest and most disturbing thing I've watched in the internet is that one guy's slow descent to insanity because its brain lost its ability to sleep. He vlogged regularly until he died. That's one of the most disturbing things I know, that anyone, including myself, can have their last sleep without knowing it. Edit, Ricard Sajian's channel for those who asked. Edit 2, TL, DW, the guy had a U-tie. He didn't have insurance so he took an antibiotic. After two weeks, he lost his ability to sleep because of the side effect of that antibiotic. Fatal insomnia, your body and mind slowly rot while still alive edit. Thanks Anon, everyone who is frightened by this, do be aware it's a prime disease that's passed genetically or occurs sporadically extremely rarely, I mean less than 100 cases in the world rarely. This won't just suddenly happen to you. I'm not really a fan of people saying stuff like, Omg wow so many like Omg, but it's nice to have this be my highest upvote comment instead of dick gun. It's actually a prion disease. We don't quite know the link between prion diseases and sleep, but most diseases that have toxic protein aggregates also come with problems sleeping as well. I should note that prion diseases can be genetic. Fatal familial insomnia is a known genetic prion disease. Also not all prion diseases are infectious, as far as I'm aware, it's impossible to catch fatal familial insomnia, though for multiple reasons I don't recommend eating anyone with the disease or engaging in other activities that can spread different prion diseases.